Hey, Mike here. And if you like what I'm doing on the podcast and elsewhere, and if you want to help me help more people get into the best shape of their lives, please consider checking out my VIP one-on-one -on -one coaching service where we can help you get in the best shape of your life. My team and I have helped people of all ages, circumstances, and needs. So no matter how complicated or maybe even hopeless you might think your situation is, we will figure it out and we will get you results. Every diet and every training program is 100% custom. We provide daily workout logs and do weekly accountability calls. Our clients get priority email service and discounts on supplements and other products, and the list of benefits goes on and on. So to learn more, head over to www.legionathletics.com slash coaching. That's L-E-G-I-O-N athletics.com slash coaching and schedule your free consultation call. I should also mention that there is usually a wait list and new slots do fill up very quickly. So do not wait if this sounds even remotely interesting to you. Go ahead and schedule your call now. Again, that URL is legionathletics.com slash coaching. Hello, hello, boys and ghouls. I am Mike Matthews, and this is the Muscle for Life podcast. Welcome, welcome. So this episode is a little bit different because last month I flew out to Wichita Falls over in Texas to hang out with Mr. Starting Strength himself, Mark Ripito, and to go on his podcast, Starting Strength Radio, which he records live in his little studio. Now, I have been a fan of Mark's work for a long time. His book, Starting Strength, was the first good book on training that I've read, and it was the first book to turn me on to proper training techniques, and I've had Mark on my podcast here a number of times, and those episodes are always popular, always some of the most popular, actually, once they've sat in the feed for a bit and racked up plays. And over the years, we've also become buddies. In fact, Mark even wrote the foreword to the newest editions of my books, Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, and Thinner, Leaner, Stronger, which I think is pretty cool, considering that his book, again, was the first aha for me. The first big training aha came from starting strength. Now, this episode is an interview, of course, that we did on his show. And we go all over the place, ranging from writing new editions of books because he has updated starting strength a number of times over the years and how I lost close to a million dollars in Amazon sales. That was fun. Google's aggressive algorithm updates. That's also fun. The women's soccer pay scandal and more. So as you can tell, it is not practical or educational per se. So if that's really why you are here and why you listen to my show. You might not find this one too interesting, but if you are interested more in just hearing Mark and I chew the fat for a bit, tell some jokes, share some war stories and the like, then I think you will find this episode at least amusing. So here it is. Welcome back to Starting Strength Radio. We're here with our friend Mike Matthews. Michael, thank you so much for flying Let's have like out a, here to a long, talk to awkward us. Awkward handshake. Yes, in fact, but it's so much fun. <laughs> Your hands so are big. Much. My hands are not big. My hands are sweaty too because mm. it's 108 today or something like that. Well, Mike's here as our guest. We're going to talk to Mike about all kinds of stuff today. But first, I wanted to let him tell everybody about his new book. It's not really a new book. Yeah, it's, it's a new it's edition. A, it's a new edition of the book. So let's have it. Um, yeah. So I, I, in 2012, maybe I'll uh, just tell it as a little bit of a story. So yeah. it's not just, so it's interesting. So I'm <laughs> saying buy my book, which so is they, on sale for 99 so cents right now, Kindle. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. No, but so in 2012, I published a book called Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, obviously for men. 
And it was kind of just the book I wish someone would have given me back right. when I was like 17, right? The basics of yeah, like, I know all diet, about nutrition, exercise, right? How to get abs, stuff like that. Right. And abs are important. They are to some people. Yep. To us narcissists out mm-hmm. there, they're important. Now, Mike, that's so stupid. You're the least narcissistic person in the – for a guy have, with abs, but you I don't know pretend. anything about narcissism. <laughs> we do. I promise. We all know about narcissism, and you ain't him. All right? <laughs> so. That's part of my brain. Come on, man. I'm, the, I'm a fitness. I'm, I'm a fitness guy. And anyways, that book became popular and started selling quite well. And that was actually my my entrance into the fitness space was via that right. book. And then along the way, I wrote a second edition based on just feedback I was getting from people, my own list right. of things as I continued. Well, it's done. To, you learn shit. You yeah. put it in another and edition and be like, that would be good to change, add, remove, blah blah blah. Exactly. Um, and and then so four years ago, the second edition had come out. So it'd been four years since I had updated it, mm-hmm. and uh, the list just got long enough to where it made sense to do it again. Right. And so funny, so I, what I thought was going to be, I don't know how this was for you, but what I thought was going to be more an editorial thing where I was going to get into the second edition and read through it, again, change things, go through my little checklist. Well, it wasn't actually that little, maybe like 25 items that I've just things I wanted to right, do. Right. But as I started to read it. your notes list. We yeah, all have that. Yeah, right. exactly. But as I started to read through the second edition, I just hated it. I just didn't yeah. like oh. my voice. I didn't like how I was explaining things. I didn't like how the right. It was organized, even though, sure, it was popular and it had a lot of good reviews. And it's not that it was a bad book, but... This sounds real familiar. So, but that's a good sign, right? It means that, I mean, I would say that it would be concerning professionally if that was not the case. If you could look at something right. you wrote four years ago and still be like, yeah, that's really fucking good. Man, that's, I hadn't learned a damn thing. Yeah, that's what that means, right? Or it means <laughs> I haven't that, seen anything new. Yeah, or I haven't right. improved at all as right. a writer or right. you know, communicator. Right. So basically, as I was getting into it, I just was like, I need to, I need to kind of, not the information I like, the core information, but I need to reorganize this and rewrite it from scratch. And so that's what I did. Oh, God, I can't even open the first edition. Yeah. Yeah. Starting strength, can't read it, can't yeah. stand it, don't yeah. want to look at it, hate that I've got it on my shelf. Yep. It's an embarrassing That it has your name on it. I understand. There's my name on it. I feel the mm, same you know, way about the first you, editions. Oh, you just can't. They're just, they're unreadable at yeah. this point. Look, boys and girls, if you aren't learning things, just go away. You're not helping us out here. If you're not learning anything, if you haven't changed an opinion over the past 10 years that you once held as an irrefutable existential, all-revolving truth, then you're not thinking very hard. And this is just what happens. To You learn, you improve, and you'd better, if you intend to remain professionally respected, yep. you relevant, you had better say, I was wrong, yep. and this is right now. Yep. And if you won't do that, there have been a lot of people in this business that won't do this. And a lot of people don't, they just don't like to do it at all, personally. No. You know, oh, no. Spirit, just, you know yeah. it seems like one of their over, their primary objectives is to assert how right they are at all Narci- times. Narcissism. There it is, isn't it? It's a narcissism. Yeah. It's just, if you can't be wrong. Or just an emotion. If every yeah. bad thing that ever happens is somebody else's fault, if you are not capable of admitting that you did something wrong, you're just not going to be useful to many people. That's you true. know, people learn. Yep. Everybody fucks things up. And and people, you know? it's not like people, I mean, I haven't experienced this where people, they don't give me a hard time where sometimes no. people email and ask about things that have changed. And I'll say like, that's what I thought back then. Right. And I don't think that my reasoning was like wildly off base, but it's just it's what just, you knew at the time. Yeah, and and then, it happens to be wrong. Now. Exactly. I've done that dozens and dozens of times. And people appreciate that. Yeah. I know from interacting with people that they appreciate a guy who will say, yeah, that was that was not right. Yeah. I've learned better, and here's the new shit. Yeah. And that's what new additions are for. Yep. And so long as you get the most important things most of the right most of the time, then you're going to be doing well by people. Obviously, there are certain yes. things that you would not want to get wrong. Because right. they, you know, they could, in the case of exercising. dangerous. Yeah, exactly. You know? But a lot of the things, though, that when you're getting into the more extraneous stuff, the fringe stuff that is shifting. I mean, there's been... 
Mm -hmm. In the last four years, quite a bit of, I, I think of with the exercise side of things, a bit of research that now, because there was a time a few years ago when frequency was like the thing, right? Mm -hmm. And people were saying that if you're not training every major muscle group at least three times a week, then you're an <laughs> idiot and you're probably not going to make any gains. Right. And so, you know, that was once a strong opinion. I never had that opinion. But just a few it, years ago, there are people that have credentials, they have acronyms after their name and stuff. Oh, yeah. and Well, who doesn't have and, those? And, and, but they were saying those things and you know there's there's no question now that that's wrong for example well one of the things i think we've accomplished is that we've demonstrated conclusively that a lot of that depends on how long you've been training and how you've been training previously because sure. i squat once a week mm. but i wouldn't put a novice on a, i'm post advanced i'm yeah. staving off death <laughs> training is what i'm doing yeah. and 63-year-old guy like me that's on the downhill slide that's uh, about ready to be set out for the polar bears to eat his ass. I'm In squat. Texas. I, yeah. Well, well, you know, well, they'll probably move me to Canada, <laughs> move me to Saskatchewan. A camp. A concentration camp. <laughs> a, a polar bear camp. Yes. But I'm not going to train the way a novice does. So, you know, all that frequency, all that stuff has always been dependent on – how long you've been training and what your previous training history has done to your physiology. And I think also what you're trying to get out of your training too. Right? Yes. If you're staving off death, I'm not a competitor anymore. I don't care how much I squat. I've got a squat, yeah. but I don't care about PR squats right. because I'm not a competitor anymore. Right. But somebody that's young, new, trying to get strong, you got to squat more than I do. And this is kind of a duh thing, isn't it? Right. You know, for example, Starting strength is a gallon of milk a day, right? Every time for everybody, for you, for me, for Bree, gallon of milk a day. I wouldn't do it. I would be a heretic. I wouldn't do it either. I'd blast. You know, the hilarious thing about this is, is that people are so quick to stop thinking. They hear it on the internet and they believe it. That's one of the things the internet has done for us. It has made us gullible. It has made us susceptible to just reading the headline of the article and the not tweet. reading the tweet, no. reading the 123 words or whatever the fuck it is, and believing that what this person said about Mike Matthews is what Mike Matthews believes. Because they just saw it on the Internet. And, it's you know, people aren't any more circumspect than that anymore, especially in our industry. There are a whole bunch of people in this business that really like need it. to be selling cars, <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. Or just hawking stuff, other things on the internet, right. just internet marketers. Yes. Leave us alone. Leave the fitness industry alone because you guys are not entitled to an opinion. And, but unfortunately the market has changed over the years with the internet. And the internet has shortened everybody. Brought a lot of attention. good, of course, not just not access to information, to, yeah. unparalleled developments in society, yeah. all that other stuff. Well, I mean, even in our, even in the right. fitness space, no, you're I mean, absolutely it's done, done right. a lot of good, but it's come with a price. Yeah, it's made it hard. You have to be good at sifting through information and and finding reliable sources and actual right. authorities, and that can be tricky. If the more information is available the better you have to be at sifting through it. Yeah, yes. because the good stuff is not always the shiniest or the most no, attractive. That's absolutely true. And this is where the marketers come in. So right. our space is dominated by marketers, first right. and foremost. And that's not going to change. I mean, that's been the case. I don't think it's changing anytime soon. No, it's it just cause It's been the case forever. I mean, it's since, been the case. Since sure. advertising, since Claude Hopkins back in the early 1900s, and when advertising really started to become a science, and they really started to figure out how to persuade people and how to sell people. Right. That's the way it's been, and, and probably, I mean, we, we'd probably be complaining about the same things and regardless of the industry we were in. It's, it's probably very similar. Right. If it's a direct consumer. You're absolutely right. The marketing aspect of any commercial endeavor probably is the source for most of the problems associated with that endeavor because of the need to find customers. Yeah. And it's just and, lie to do it. I mean, that's what it boils they, down to. And I like some professions are worse about that than others. Like if I want somebody to lie to me, I'll go buy a car. 
I'll just, or some supplements. Or, 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 or beauty products. <laughs> yeah. Those are yeah. that's the most amazing bunch. And so, they'll say anything. <laughs> what, they won't say anything. There are there are margins <laughs> oh in that my business. God. Yes. The eighty dollar bottle of cologne yep. or something like that yep. costs yep. about what? 83 cents probably like, yeah something like that like landed oh done you know <laughs> yeah. what i mean sitting yeah. on the shelf eighty three thousand percent market <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's God good business. Almighty. so anyway well how's business business is good i mean the focus mostly for me personally it's the books right and just because i mean it's work that i enjoy out of mm-hmm. all the random shit i have to do it's probably the work i enjoy the most actually but really from as far as business goes it's it's supplements and but i'm not like everybody else actually <laughs> I, well that's why i'm sitting here well i know I, I don't think you are <laughs> mike that's why you're here today i could have asked all kinds of people of to course. come on the the podcast with us but i've known you for quite a while and i know you to be a honest guy your your approach is similar to ours there are some basic things that work right like your emphasis in terms of your programs has always been aesthetics ours has been strength but we both base the programs on basic barbell exercise yeah. complicated full body movements loaded incrementally you just take a different spin on it than i do but what yeah. we do is basically the the same thing we're not in disagreement yeah, on basic some anything. bodybuilding stuff yeah and basically. i you know and i fuck with mike about him having his shirt on today for some odd reason and stuff. <laughs> get some i views. fuck with him about yeah. going up a weight class and we you know i fuck with him a lot about stuff but and you've heard it on our audio interviews but we're basically doing the same thing here. He's just doing it at 12% body fat, and we're doing it at what, 30, 30, 35% body fat. Are you calling me fat 12%, Mark? 12% is – he's taking offense. I would have, I would he's have. taking offense at 12%. <laughs> I'm not going to eat for he's five days. He's bulimia. He's going to go <laughs> – He's got to get down. Take some more fat burners. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was 12%. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what does that mean? Who am I? You failed. Who am I? <laughs> what am I doing? Oh, shit. Uh, but yeah, no, things are moving along well. <laughs> so Legion is the supplement company. That's, that's the primary business. And right. so we got kicked Website. in the nuts. What's that? Your oh, website? Yeah, L-E-G-I-O-N, legionathletics.com. Legionathletics.com. Yeah, if you want to check us out. But we got kicked in the dick by Amazon the hardest. So, the, what they do to you? They're difficult to deal with sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you just to preface this, if you don't have at least one catastrophe per year with Amazon, you're either not doing any <laughs> sales on Amazon or you're like Jeff Bezos' cousin or something. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's going to mess been, with you. You've been uh, petted on the head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're a maid person person to be gender inclusive there right so my number one best-selling product on amazon was my pre-workout called pulse right and it was the number one pre-workout on amazon right and so it's moving along doing very well and then it just goes down gets turned off right and this shit happens right so goes, well, they turned the page off it just can't buy it anymore it's just it's just gone right are and you so that, serious absolutely so i mean it was i don't know the exact numbers but i would say it was probably cruising along at about ten thousand dollars a week in revenue and sales and then it's just to zero and it took three to four weeks to even find out like why what was going on um, and what did they do to you? so yeah so it, it gets better because there were some misunderstandings in the warehouse and what exactly they should be doing and so they accidentally Accidentally destroyed three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, my cost of stuff, and then and of then, your product, yes, and then said, "Oh well, you know, we're not going to reimburse you for that." So it's fine. I'm working. With, we'll get money back. We will, but you just have to go through a process, right? They've never fucked us around like that. That sounds amazing. I well, see, what, I what even, really happened? Did you so ever figure out? What, you don't ever really know what happened, right. and uh, you know, one, I've dealt with this kind of thing. This is one of the worst. I've had some other bad, similar things where products just go down, and it takes anywhere from four to six weeks to get them back. And, you know, it's annoying, but I've gone through it before. So I'm kind of like blase about it. But uh, just for example, here's something, here's a problem that Amazon has. So there's a lot of money to be made on Amazon, as a lot of people know. And so that means that it's really a battleground as far as the sellers go. So what you'll have is you'll have people out there that don't give a shit, like that we were talking about that use hair to bump up the protein content of their dog food, right? right These kinds right, of people. Right. And so what they'll do is they'll get friends to buy your product and then they'll wait a week, two weeks, whatever, leave a review. So it's a verified purchase and they'll leave like a really alarming review. Like, 
had to, you know, I had to go to the hospital. I was puking blood. I have no idea what was going on. And then they report those reviews to Amazon and that can get your product taken down just like that. Wow. And, and Amazon, unfortunately, because it's very much a bureaucracy at this point, it's, you know, 400,000 employees or whatever. They just kind of shoot first and ask questions later. That's kind right. of their. And so that's probably what happened here. It was related probably to some review of somebody, you know, it can even be beta alanine tingles. We've had pulse that product taken down simply because people complained about beta alanine tingles that's just part of the game but that aside things have still actually like that hit us we're probably like 800k behind our pacing because of that because you lose (laughs) you lose that is that is amazing because you lose momentum you have to build back you know what i mean so so but it's just like that you can just get smacked right but Despite that, I mean, the business is still doing well. We'll still have a very good year, but that's fun. And then there are these Google updates. I don't know if you guys have felt the effects of them at all. What's the- They've rolled out a few updates, started about a year ago, and they particularly went after the health and fitness space. And I made this clear. They openly said this, and they're really big on now pushing credibility, authority, and trust, right? Is really And so, I mean, there are websites that were getting hundreds of thousands of visits a month that literally got deleted off the internet, basically. I mean, like losing 95% of their traffic, of their search engine traffic, just gone, just gone. Well, for example, who? I know, I don't want to say, I know of one, he's a friend of mine. I'm not, I don't know if he'd want me to say. What was he doing? If I say too much, it'll be, he was in the fitness space, right? but very high quality information. A lot of it, I mean, probably over 40,000 studies referenced on the website and not just referenced, but like this was real work. This dude built this from nothing. Well, what do you think happened to it? It's, Why did they it's do this? weird. Like I've seen a big hit in traffic, not that big. And it hasn't made that big of a difference because it was mostly a hit to my blog traffic, which didn't make me that much money anyway. And right. ironically, when the blog, so Legion's blog had peaked at about maybe 1.8 million visits a month before the first update rolled out. Ironically, a lot of that traffic was AMP. And AMP, if people are not familiar, it's a Google thing where you have a very stripped down website, has very little functionality, but it loads like instantaneously, right? It's meant for news websites, really. And so somebody who worked with me previously, doesn't work with me anymore, wanted to do that. I thought that'd be a good idea because Google gives preferential treatment to AMP content. If you load instantly, they go, we'll give you a bump in the search engine rankings. But the dude didn't make sure that we have a good working AMP website. So that right. traffic was literally worthless. Like the bounce rate was like 95%. Oh, Nobody God. bought anything. So we're getting all this blog traffic. It looks cool. But then it turns out like 70% of it is AMP. Oh, okay. Turn it off. That naturally is going to, traffic's going to decline. Google rolls out updates. And so now Legion's blog is cruising at like 900K a month. But, you know, that it's not a straight how, having, but it was a big hit. So well, it didn't gut you. Didn't, it wasn't me. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. And we don't know right. what comes next. They've done three updates now. And so it's caused a lot of problems in the health space in particular. Right. Like there are some big websites out there that, you know, went from getting like millions and millions, 10 plus million visits a month to, you know, like three. And, oh God, which man. is, I know three is a lot, but it's, it's and I have a friend in the in digital marketing space who has probably one of the most informative websites you could imagine. The dude probably has close to 4,000 long form articles on his website. He has a brand, even he's getting hit. Like, I don't know what Google's doing. The only known winners that my team, as we've looked into it, that we found in our space is Healthline, who bought Authority Nutrition, if people remember that website, and very well fit. Those two guys are doing great. The Google right. is giving them everything. I wonder, would you think that Google's got an ownership stake no, in either one of those? I don't it, think it's that. Couldn't be anything that obvious. I don't know. I don't think no. I don't I actually don't think it's that. I think it's like I, I don't know exactly. I mean, I get if the idea is to force because you have a lot of bad information. We we're just talking about this yeah. in our space. So Certainly. if you're Google and you're like, what can we do about this? How can we help weed the weed out the bad? How can we separate the good and the bad? How can we assist in this? It seems like the idea is, okay, well, let's really start diving into these websites. Who's writing the content? What are their credentials? Do they right. have anybody reviewing and fact checking? Uh, how believable is this information? And of course, it's not a bad idea, but the implementation- well, it is a bad idea though 
because who gets to determine that's the problem the veracity that's the problem of the applicability it sounds of nice it's one of those things sure. it's like the idea that the enlightenment ideals of we're all equal it all sounds nice right. but it doesn't fucking right. work and right. so 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 no far, it doesn't it doesn't fucking work i mean for example in our business exercise physiologists phd exercise physiologists would seem to be the authorities yeah like Google would see that and be like, yeah. "Oh, that's the guy. Yeah. He's look. There's a terminal degree in Credible, this specially approved immediate credibility, yeah. and nothing could be further from the truth." I know it's unfortunate. You know, it is unfortunate that they don't understand anything beyond that. Yep. This is and the, how is an algorithm this is credential worship, scientism, yep. this sort of thing. Yep. You know, and how is an algorithm supposed to overcome that? I mean, I, yeah. it can't <laughs> exactly. All no it can way. do is create problems. No way. That needs. That's up to the market. That's up to the people. You know what I mean. That's yes, up to the, the functioning of just the free market. People principles. absorbing the information, making decisions, yep. propagating with the good, where to spend their money, which means it's not bullshit, and what them. to talk about. Right. I mean, as you know, every business, the number one goal is to generate word of mouth, right? And you can obviously stimulate growth through spending money in advertising, but sure. if a business is really going to make well, it long Depending term, on the service product you're trying to sell. For example, the, I don't think the gym business has ever really made any money off of advertising. I you mean to know. bring in people? Yes. What I, about something like Planet Fitness? I don't think Planet Fitness derives much of that traffic from anything except Word of mouth. Mm. Their friends joined Planet Business. Yep. It was 10 bucks, so yep. they went and joined one day. They hadn't been back in three years, but yep. they're still paying 10 bucks because, you know, they might want to. Yep. And it's only 10 bucks. But that's also it's word the, of mouth. I don't think the fear that, of losing something. You feel like you have something right. with your I got $10 this month. cheap deal, you yeah. know. And Planet Fitness, in that respect, is a what a brilliant idea. Yeah. I mean, they. I was have, skeptical when uh, I first heard about it. I was like, I don't know the whole yeah, it's, positioning, it's, it's the so, pizza it, day, it, and it almost stupid. seems like it's pandering. Yeah. Would it people feel almost offended? But I guess not. It appeals to the demographic that will pay you ten dollars a month, put it on their credit card, let you auto draft it, yeah. and never go in the building. Yeah. That's See, designed. If they, yeah, if That's they knew designed. that, they, those guys, they are, knew those that. people are brilliant. Then. These people are brilliant. Yeah. They knew. If they that. knew. Like there are a bunch they of these that. people that there are, are a bunch of people that will so, buy a membership. Yep. And keep paying for it if it's cheap enough. Yeah. And never Imagine if that's your plan. You're like, we want people who don't work out, but will just pay us. We Mike, don't want them using the facility. Mike, I know that's what happened. It's, it's I know for smart. a fact that's what happened. A friend of mine back in 89. Like everyone that shows up is that you're like, oh. He was running a promotion and he proved that this would work in clubs all over the country. He would go in to the market and he'd hang around for a couple of weeks and kind of assess the way the city moved and stuff. And then he would put out a lead box. You know what a lead box is? It's where you sign up for a free vacation, put your name and it won't work now, obviously, but this is, but what he was doing was he was putting a lead box in a restaurant or a donut shop or a, you know, a place where people went, nightclubs yeah. and yeah. wherever they'd let him. And so he would have a little list of, you'd fill out the name because yep. you're going to win a free vacation, you know, free vacation for two to the Bahamas. Just let us have your name and telephone number. So he would go around, he'd put these lead boxes out, he'd check them every week, pull the leads out, and he would place these boxes in locations where he knew that the people that went there to shop were not in the fitness demographic, but they're in the free shit demographic. <laughs> <laughs> so he would bring him home, and after the first week, Monday morning, he'd start calling all these numbers. Yeah. And he'd say, you didn't win the vacation, but you want a free two-week membership to Wichita Falls Athletic Club. And all you've got to do to claim your free membership. We're not going to charge your card. Is, no, there's no cards involved in it. All you got to do to claim your free membership is to come in and bring the enrollment fee in of $92. And these people would show up, and they'd pay $92. For their free. For their free membership. They'd work out once and leave. <laughs> and you'd run that promotion for two months, and it would generate the club $75,000. This is 30 years ago. Imagine that's right? how you made your money, though. <laughs> yeah, he made a lot of money doing this. He would uh, split it with the club. He'd split it with the club, and he made a hell of a bunch of money doing it. Planet Fitness is exactly the same thing. 
They have figured out a that's way like to- on par in my mind with just like usury. That's how you make your yeah. money. Like, yeah, I just loan, I give needy people money and I charge them 30%. Uh, I charge 30%, them 30%. Interest. That's, that's, uh, that's, yeah. They're only going to have the loan for three weeks anyway. Yeah. They can afford it. Exactly. That kind of shit. Yeah. But this is exactly what they did. And it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. The people that are buying the little shitty $10 a month membership get out of it exactly what they want. Yeah. The ability to say I'm a member of a gym. Yeah. And you to know? feel like that first step has been taken. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I can go back if I want to, yeah. you know, and they keep paying them. It's just, God, it's brilliant. It's chicken shit, but it's brilliant. Yeah. I mean, you have to admit there's a certain amount of yeah, yeah. genius involved I mean, involved that's in that. more above board than what the other guy was doing. <laughs> oh, slightly. Uh, yeah. I mean, slightly. I mean, <laughs> Ninety-two dollars for your Slide. free. Is, yeah, that's where the you're, disconnect. You're free. <laughs> that's where, but it was it was free, <laughs> and I had you know, honest to God, we had eight or ten of those members that yeah. used the club for two years that actually came in and used the club. Yeah, and that when the thing was over, signed up at the gym. But that wasn't the purpose of the deal. Yeah, the purpose of the deal was to harvest membership money from people who will not go, mm. and. Really, if you think about it, at any corporate fitness facility in the country, that's a large part of their membership. Oh, of course. Absolutely. You know, if they all went to the gym. It'd be a problem. You, I don't know you if they, couldn't fit them in the gym and the parking lot. Well, then how much would they have extra. to charge, you know, if they had high attendance rate, they'd have to charge so much money just to keep, you know, it'd be a problem. Right. People would show up and but, it'd be so full, they, they'd cancel. They'd just go somewhere else. Well, there was a time when... Industry-wide, the actual usage rate of a gym membership, a health club membership, was something on the order of 15%. Mm. Of the membership, yeah, yeah, yeah. 15% would use it on a regular basis. Yeah. And by regular basis, I mean twice a week. Yeah, a couple times a week. Yeah. yeah, very low percentage. And that's the industry standard. And it may be a little higher than that now, but it's still the case. Yeah. You know, if you're a member of Gold's, you probably don't go that much. Mm. But you're still paying them. Yeah. But you go occasionally. And to you, it's worth it. And that's fine. That's yeah. the market. It's fine. Sure. Planet Fitness does a fine job of that. It's just yeah. they're not in the same business we are. Right. They're in the sales business. We're in the fitness business. You're oh, getting into the supplement business. Well, we may be. We may very well be rolling out a couple of products here pretty soon. We're going to talk to Mike a little bit more about that because he knows more about it than we do. He's graciously agreed to help us with that. Hey, quickly, before we carry on, if you are liking my podcast, would you please help spread the word about it? Because no amount of marketing or advertising gimmicks can match the power of word of mouth. So if you are enjoying this episode and you think of someone else who might enjoy it as well, please do tell them about it. It really helps me. And if you are going to post about it on social media, definitely tag me so I can say thank you. You can find me on Instagram at Muscle for Life Fitness, Twitter at Muscle for Life, and Facebook at Muscle for Life Fitness. What else you want to talk about? You want to give everybody a breakdown on your approach to the problem of what to do in the gym? Or? Like you said, it's pretty similar, right? So it really is. Uh, I have a book for men, bigger, leaner, stronger, a book for women, thinner, leaner, stronger. And that came about because a lot of women were reading the men's book and saying like, Hey, this seems pretty applicable to me, but I don't really want to be bigger. Yeah. The bigger thing was yeah, a problem not for them. really what I want. And also so there's a fair amount of upper body training and, you know, I'm more concerned with my lower body. Right. So eventually it made sense to take the men's book and just customize it to, sure. to women as much as as possible. Sure. Is There's this, a small subset of the women's market that wants to get bigger. Yeah, there is. A and so, some women intentionally now still read that book because they want to, you know, get as jacked. They as know they they're can. skinny. Even those that don't want to be jacked, that are rail thin. That's true. And are, actually, with are, the title, I was kind of look better with a little bit more muscle mass. Absolutely. The title I was thinking, like fitter, leaner, stronger, might be a better. In terms of really the better statement of the benefits, because there are mm -hmm. many women out there who don't want to be thinner, like they want to be right. fitter is maybe how they might think about it. But I didn't like how that sounded in there. Well, I think that it doesn't comport well with the previous title. Yes, exactly. Thinner, leaner, stronger just sounds better than yes. fitter. No, leaner, for so. that market, I absolutely, it would certainly appeal to most of them. And I was also thinking with many of the women I had heard from over the years were mostly 
they wanted to start with losing some weight. And so that's almost a universal yeah. aspect of the women's fitness industry. And not because they were had body dysmorphia or something, but if a woman's at 30% body fat, she might look at 20% body fat and be like, oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. And so, you know, it's nothing unhealthy about that. Right. So that's the women's book. And the fundamentals in terms of the diet side of things are very similar. Like, you know, I don't need to explain energy balance to a man differently than a woman, right? right. Calories in, calories out. Why does Physiology that matter? Physiology is physio. It is what it is, right? Yep. But there were quite a few things that where I was able to really separate it out. Like if we were talking about common myths and mistakes, well, those are quite different, actually. Like a lot of women are concerned, at least that come my way, are concerned initially with getting bul Tooby. bulky, bulky, right? Bulky, big, bulky bunch up. What do they? What do they call it? Bunchy, bulky. That's just bulk, the word. Like bulk. I don't want to keep bulky. hearing words like bulk. I hear bunchy muscles, which doesn't mean much as to, you never heard that? I haven't heard bunchy. Yeah, I've, long, I've, lean. long well, that's, I want to the, sculpt. Like a, ball, like a, you know, a ballerina. Muscle. That's the key. Long, lean muscles. Yeah. Sculpt. Yeah. Sculpt. Yeah. Sculpt. sculpt. Long, yeah. lean, yeah. tone muscle. Toned. It's not muscles, it's muscle. Yeah. Lean muscle. Lean that's muscle. The, that's the key. Long, lean muscle. Yeah. muscle. <laughs> Fuck the fat muscle. Long, lean Gotta muscle. Gotta be lean muscle. So anyway, it goes over on the dietary side of things. Again, the practical approach is very similar, of course. It's just what it boils down to is that women generally are going to be eating less. They're be eating fewer calories than men because they just burn fewer calories, right. smaller bodies. And how those calories break down in terms of protein and carbohydrate and fat doesn't really have to change. It kind of the standard approach that I recommend. Just proportion down. Yep. Is like you could start with that, you know, 40, 40, 20 type approach where about 40% of your calories are coming from protein, 40% from carbohydrate, 20% from fat, or you could express it in different terms, protein somewhere between, I don't know, 0 0.8 to 1 gram per pound per day, and somewhere around 0 0.3 grams of fat per day. You can go higher if you want, but that's probably enough for health, and then fill in the rest of your calories with carbs, right? Mm. And of course, you are taking your energy out, and you are calibrating your energy in accordingly. If you want to get skinnier, if you want to get leaner, if you want to lose fat, you're going to have to have an energy deficit there, right? So you're going to have to eat fewer calories than you burn over time, and, and these are boring things to you and maybe to people listening. But if you remember, I remember when you first learned about this, it was like your mind was blown. I just remember because you hear all these weird things, you know, right now it's the keto diet or you know. that this food makes you fat. No, it's this food makes you fat and this food makes you lean. And, you know, you have to do a bunch of cardio. You hear all these things. And so when somebody comes along and says like, not really, just here are your calories, set them up like this. I want you to break these calories down into protein, carbs, and fats. I do want you to eat nutritious foods because I do want you to take care of your body. It doesn't matter for your body composition. Let's make that clear. But let's think a little bit further than just body composition. So how about this? Get like the majority of your calories, 80% of your calories from nutritious foods. And if you want to take the remaining and eat whatever you want, then do that. And that gives you right. some flexibility. And This is precisely equivalent to our approach for strength training. Right. You squat. You bench, you press, you deadlift, you do some power cleans, power snatches, chin-ups, right? That's all you need to do. But the key is, amazingly enough, you just add a little bit of weight every time you train. Add a little bit of weight every time you train. If you do it three days a week, then you're going to get stronger. And it's astonishingly simple. Yep. It's astonishingly simple, and it works every single time. Time it's tried, yep. but it's unimpressive. It's not sexy to people. It doesn't have who, the marketing. Who like complexity? Yes. That's true. Right. And that's a marketing tactic is, I mean, complexity yes. sells. If you are a good salesperson, you know how to use it. Yes. Like muscle confusion, these kinds of things, right? These things they right. sell. I mean, maybe not that. So at this point, I think most people know that's bullshit, but there was a time when, and then you take that and it, it gets spun into the next turbulence training or, you know, whatever. <laughs> and that, that training on an airplane? <laughs> only when there's training. turbulence. That's the key. Oh, a smooth yeah. airplane ride is yeah. just no fun. Yeah. That, that, it's what simple. happens? It's not it's during, not complex. During it's not productive. Turbulence is your testosterone levels rock by like ten thousand uh, percent. Yeah, don't look into it, but that's what happens. <laughs> the anabolic window. Yes, it's the anabolic window <laughs> is that turbulence period. So, so yeah, you know, funny. So a buddy of mine, he was in the gym with me, and actually met him in the gym, right? And so he was a bit overweight, and he had tried a bunch of weird diets to lose weight, and he was asking me, you know, hey, he's like, you're the fittest guy I know. What, what should I do? Just tell me what I should do, right? He's like, should I do a low carb diet? Should I do keto? What should I do? paleo and his name's josh i was like josh 
I want you to eat 2,000 calories a day and I want you to get 150 grams of protein. I don't care what you eat. Yeah, it would be good for you to eat like a vegetable or two, but right. for now, just do that. Go on a calorie counting website and I want you to just 2,000 calories. That's it. That's what you get. I do not, I don't no, care how often Im you eat. It's immediately induced yes. calorie deficit. deficit yes. Exactly. Right. And so he was a little bit puzzled. He's a, he's a smart guy. So but he's still a little bit puzzled. He was like, well, what about carbs? And I, don't, I don't care. <laughs> what you want, I don't care. And this is not the long term end all be all, but let's start. We're not going to do this. For I'll, the I just want to show Yes. I just want to show you how simple this really is. Right? right. And he's like, so sugar. I'm like, I don't care, but I don't recommend eating 150 grams of sugar a day because you're probably going to feel too good. But so maybe right. eat semi sensibly, like how you'd want your kid to eat or something. And 2,000 calories, that's it. Okay. And so he does it. And, you know, within uh, five weeks, he's down 15 pounds. Right. And he's like, you know, he was telling, he's like, this is ironic because he was quoting Carl Jung and he was saying, <laughs> yeah, he's a neat guy. He's, he can't help himself. So he went to school and he studied, he had a master's in history, he studied history and philosophy just for fun. Cause that's what he's into. And now he's a financial advisor. He knew he wasn't going to use it for anything. Right. He just did it for fun. Right. But he was like, you know, this is actually a funny concept. He was like, there's a thing that Jung said that basically like the truth, the what you need the most, what you want the most is in the place where you least want to look, right? And he's like, yeah. this is that version, this. I never wanted, like, yeah, I told myself I would never count calories. I would never pay attention to that. I would always try to find some other way. And then you tell me 2,000 calories a day, and now I've lost 15 pounds. And then eventually that turned into 30 pounds. And that was the end of his weight problem. <laughs> right. And now he knows what to do. Yep. And now he's, he knows what to do. He's reset his habits. And yep. And, and if he wants to, you know, whatever, if he's on vacation, if he wants to gain a bit of weight or he doesn't matter now, he doesn't have to fret about it because he knows right. that, cool, he'll just get back onto his exercise routine and he'll eat 2,000 calories a day. And it'll go away. And it'll go away. It'll go away. Yeah. There's a training equivalent of that too. And that's very much the approach in, in my books. Again, it's very similar to what you teach. In fact, your book, Starting Strength, was the first real sensible training program that I ever did. Before that, I was doing bodybuilding stuff out of magazines, right. you know, two and a half hour workouts. So was I. <laughs> uh, and I, and I, did, and I couldn't, I hadn't deadlifted. You know. I hadn't done in seven years. I had never done a single set of uh, deadlifts, not one. I maybe had done a free squat. I had squatted on a Smith right. machine, of course, because that was safer, you oh, know. God. And, Mike, we uh, all started off this stupid time. <laughs> Ch a lot Every of chest flies. Of I, I had some pecs, though. So <laughs> yeah, and a little bit of biceps too. It's interesting that we're talking about these misconceptions that we've all had to deal with. The most pervasive problem in terms of body composition that I see throughout this is not particularly a problem within the industry because I think we all know better than this, but popular culture clings to the idea that you can exercise off the fat and there's just not any way to break in to this idea. I don't even like like it's, framing it that way at all. It, I mean, it's I, I talk absolutely about that in, untrue. Yeah, I talk about that in the books. You know, sure, you can support your fat loss yes. with exercise. You burn energy. Sure. But you go in the gym to build muscle. You, you know, can get support, strong. And the big muscles burn the fat, but you don't the exercise itself doesn't burn enough calories yep. to affect your body composition. Yep. There is no body fat loss yep. without a calorie deficit. Yep. There isn't one. Yep. But most people, if you ask them down deep in their little heart, what's the one thing that you need? You got to do? run off the yep. weight. You yep. know, you yep. got to run off the weight. Yep. And people still. I mean, you can look at it this way, right? So you can lose fat or weight, however you want to look at it, without exercising, just by manipulating your calories. But you can't gain muscle and strength without exercising. Right. right. <laughs> so, and so. how many fat guys do you know that run at the YMCA at yeah. noon every day? You know, yep. And, and you know, that's okay. There's does it health, work or not? There's no. health benefits to it. Sure. I'd, I'd rather I mean, have them doing run, that than sitting on the couch. If you want to run, go ahead and run. Yep. But let's not labor under the delusion that you get abs from running. Yep. In the absence of a calorie deficit, you're going to have a belly. Which is hard to do if you're not really paying attention to what you're eating. And it's, it's also hard to, hard to do if you don't care. <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> I'm 63 and I just don't care all the YouTube guys that are writing up to rip us off. <laughs> what the, where are the rip abs? Them off where are the abs? Pile of shit. Look at him sitting there. He looks like a homeless guy with a. Dressed, <laughs> dressed like he works at Walmart. Oh, Walmart, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't tell. Oh, hold Is on. He... Wait. Everybody <laughs> see this? Starting strength t-shirt. He stole that from a homeless guy. A free starting strength t-shirt. In front of Walmart. The first one that tells me what this is. Oh. All right. Y'all keep track of that, okay?
So what else are we going to talk about? We can't talk about politics here because that's too dangerous. Mike and I are in agreement about virtually everything. You won't like it. <laughs> so we're we're going to leave. Have kids we're going to leave it alone. That need you don't, that, I that a, don't I need death threats. I have an expensive wife. I, uh, yeah, I can't afford. Don't need death threats. I can't afford. I've always wanted a death threat. I mentioned this in one of the earlier podcasts. You haven't gotten a death threat? No. Really? God damn it. I've been asking for a death one threat. One word away, Mark. That's one word away. Asking for a death threat. Please threaten my life. <laughs> That's when you know you've made it. One of the, the, the said, uh, <laughs> said he's going to poison me with meat no, no, or something. No, he just said you better delete this video if you know what's good for you or something like that. That's, oh, really? I, yeah, that's a th- I, nobody that's told a me that. Yeah. How come you kept that from me? I just saw it. Like <laughs> we better delete the vegan video like if we knew what was good for us. And it's still up. And we're still here. We're still here. I guess all life Building's still in place. All life isn't sacred to those for people, now. I guess. No, but... Well, remember, They're humans all, are a virus. So Humans are a virus on yeah. the face of the planet, and vegans are all estradiol poisoned, <laughs> estrogen-laced creatures I, with I no hair. I haven't been and, clashed with vegans, vegans, you know, tomato, I'm not tomato. Call them anything uh, but vegan. Because I wrote one article on just vegan bodybuilding, but wasn't trying to make anybody wrong for anything. I was actually talking about like, okay, if you, for whatever reason, if you want to eat like this, here's a way to make it work, right? And you know, right. you have some issues. It's, it can be difficult to get enough protein. Real difficult. Um, yeah. And you got you, you probably want to take a couple supplements as well to make sure that you don't develop. I said B12. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, oh, calcium God. can be a bit difficult as yeah. well, and iron's in a few things, zinc. But, you know, it was well-received just because right. like I was – being objective and just laying out, there are some downsides to this, right? right? Well, I'm not talking right from a moral. I'm just saying physiologically, right. come on, let's just uh, look uh, at this. Of course. And you were not intentionally being a horse's ass like I was. Right. And am. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because it amuses me. Zenith. Sanguine. Zenith sanguine. sanguine. So, so that, that means like the highest. I don't know, but it's, it's, the highest, he's trying to say like the highest blood. The like highest. He's, he, tra- is, he is nobility. Okay. He looks like a vampire. Okay. Oh, good. Joke. My yeah. video is a joke. Remove it already for your own sake. Ooh. That's for my own sake is a threat. <laughs> Zenith. Thirty-one eighteen Buchanan. <laughs> I think it would be sanguine. Seven, sanguine. seven six three zero oh, eight. You know where I am, boy. He's going to show up at night. <laughs> at night. He's going to show up at – that'd be the wrong time to show up here. Yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, that's Probably, the uh, wrong time to show up here. And I'll show you why here when we get through. Okay, good. <laughs> so anything else well, interesting we can talk about? Every time we talk, we have fake, long, fake, interesting fake conversations. Fake naturals are always amusing. Maybe that's more in my world, though, so many of these people that uh, – Anybody who hope. has lifetime natural in their IG bio – is full of shit, is on enough drugs to, like, kill a rhino. <laughs> That's the starting typically. point. Typically, yeah, especially so if they claim to be a vegan. Yeah. You, they claim to be a vegan, yeah, and they're and you, huge, and yeah, and you're, you got 19 you're, inch. You're 6'1", 236 6% year-round, okay. And you're a vegan. Yeah. Right. Or not. You know, right, regardless. and you're clean. I wrote about right. this recently, a yeah. long autistic article breakdown of FFMI and its correlation with steroid use. And um, and it didn't actually, a couple people tried to nitpick a couple things, but right. you know, we're basically what the data shows. And there are a lot of other people out there, smart people who would agree with me, building up my authority here. Yeah. <laughs> we have consensus. No, but it's around 25. Like there's an FFM, normalized FFMI around 25 is maybe achievable naturally. Very small number of people have the genetics to do that. You no, start, I've seen guys that do, but they're, that's not normal for a definitely for a not human. Normal. Now, remember, it also can be difficult though to determine a true normalized FFMI if the body fat level is too high. So, like in guys, when it gets above twenty percent, it gets bumped up because of the additional non lean mass tissue that will accumulate that will register as it's not fat mass per se, but it's additional connective tissue that also shrinks as you get leaner. Yes. And so skin thickness. Yeah. Even, you even, know, it matters. that is a big deal. There's so much skin. And yeah. if it's thick, it's heavy and it takes up a lot of space. 
And so anyway, it's just though, you know, it's it's just funny when you have these guys, you have guys on Instagram with FFMIs of ridiculous, 28. Now, to put it in perspective, I mean, I, I just look small because of the shirt I'm wearing, but that's, go to my and Instagram. And that's the only reason. Yes, the only reason. I'm actually huge. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm 6'1", 195. That's just, that's just where I'm at, right? I have small bones, though, like my wrist. I was never Tiny. meant to be a big guy. Did you do ballet at one time? I could have. Uh, when I got you lean for the first time, people were like, I remember one person was like, you have like a, a nice swimmer's body. And that's why I knew I had to get bigger. <laughs> oh, God. I was like, oh, oh God damn. I, I like, got the gains And he didn't even mean it. That wasn't like a, that wasn't a left-handed, that was, they actually were trying to give me a compliment. Oh, you know what I mean? Trying their best. Yeah. But anyways, uh, go to my Instagram and see me with some muscle mass. And my normalized FMI is like 23 in the low 23. So put it in perspective. Imagine my height fucking 28. Muscles bulging out of my clothing. Oh, my God. Oh, natural, though. Natural. Oh, yeah. natty. Okay. Natty. Yeah, 220. 220 shredded year-round lifetime drug-free. So I just should, for, for me and Nick and everybody else that doesn't know what FFMI is, oh, right. tell us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I do, but sure. For, yeah, I just don't worry. No, no, I, I should have thought of this. And, and so just for anybody listening that doesn't know that it is, so it's fat-free mass index. Right. So it's just a relationship between your height and muscularity. You can right. think about that way and your weight, really. Right. But it, it it takes into account, though, your body fat level as well. So you are looking at that relationship between how tall you are and how big you are, right. basically. And there's been quite a bit of research on this over the years, over the decades now. And essentially what seems to be true is 25 five or so is about what you can expect that's top tier genetics though muscle that's really like elite mm. well maybe not okay not top tier but that is elite muscle building genetics if you can get into the 25s and be like relatively lean as well mm -hmm. you are jacked and if people are curious what theirs is they can just google ffmi calculator i mean i have one on my website but pull up an ffmi calculator put in your numbers and you'll see what, what i mean right so like my normalized ffmi is in the 23s mm -hmm. uh, low 23s and you know i'm about as big as i genetically speaking according to different models maybe i could gain another eight pounds of muscle or so five mm -hmm. to eight and it would take years, probably three years to do it. At the body fat level, you are. Yes, but you know, there are a few different models, but those models usually are assuming stage weight. So they're usually assuming like shredded, right. you know what I mean? Like, right. okay, how big can it's you be just... at like 6% body fat? Okay. And then kind right. of extrapolating from there. And there's also, you know, Kate, I know you've probably come across Casey Butts's work on how big can you get based on your bone size, how much bone you have in your right, body. I don't, I don't you know. You might find that, that interesting. I, I, it that. might be interesting. I just don't know that anybody derives any benefit from looking at that because there just aren't any big bodybuilders that aren't on a bunch of drugs. Oh, yeah. And sure. that's just all the, I'm sorry, See, that's but just I, the way it is. That's why I <laughs> like, though, I mean, I think that, again, there are, I wrote about this, there are like, you know, four different models that are generally used. Butts is one of them. Alan Aragon put out a model, Mark and Bert, Martin Burkan, Lyle McDonald put out a model. And if you look at those, though, I've found that those actually, I think, give people better expectations and, and I talk about this in an article that I wrote on how much muscle can you build naturally, right? And kind of goes into this. Actually, I think those give better expectations than just cruising around on Instagram where you don't know. There are too many right. guys you don't. on too many drugs. And some of them are obvious. Some of them are so big. Like, right. yeah, when a dude's shoulder is bigger than his head, he's on all of the drugs. drugs. All and, of you them. know, and we don't talk about drugs on this podcast very much, but... And one of the reasons we don't talk about drugs on this podcast very much is because I just don't really care about it. Yeah. I don't care about it. It's just a fact of life. You know, I, I don't advocate it, but it's none of my business. Yeah. And nothing I'm going to say I agree. is going to change a goddamn thing about what anybody's going to do. People are going to take drugs. Get over it. Yeah. And quit worrying about it. I agree. Quit trying the only to thing involve I like. other people in that decision. It's their decision. Just shut up. Sit down. Don't care about it. The only thing I don't like, though, is, and I hear from these people firsthand, I have for some time, is when people don't understand how to spot drug use, and they don't right. understand how big of a difference drug use makes, and yeah. so then... That's why they're illegal. In all sports federations, that's why they're illegal, and yeah. that's also one of the bizarre things that's come out of this women... This trans women thing in women's sports recently is... Do you think this the, is going to uh, really continue? Do you think... 
Because then uh, I guess I, I, you know it can't much longer. Former men then are just going to dominate it can't every much female longer. sport. I mean, it, it's going to be actually a joke. It is. It's already a joke. Well, I know, but it's, it's going to be just when do we? It's going to be laughing? peak clown world when yes. female sports are now just dudes who either now identify as women or, or, or went through some surgery or hormones or whatever. But then, it, what does that say to little girls? Like, why even bother? Why trying bother? What when is, you're never going to be? You're, you're half never as going good. to win. Never ever. Never ever going. Going to win. Never. But part of the fallout from this is that some idiots are actually running around saying that testosterone does not enhance. Yes. And this is with respect to women taking testosterone. Yep. That it doesn't enhance athletic ability. Mm, okay. And yeah, that's fine. Okay. You guys go ahead and pretend. <laughs> now, I will say some aspects of athletic ability are not affected by testosterone in adult women. It does not affect vertical jump. It doesn't affect explosiveness. Right. It doesn't affect athleticism, agility, that yeah. sort of thing. But it does You're affect You're not going to have a better golf swing or something. But it does of. affect strength in that you will have a better golf swing because you're stronger. Right. But I'm saying Not because you're better. Techni- there yeah, aren't any yeah. technique steroids. Yeah. There are no technique steroids. And there are no explosion steroids. Anytime you hear the word steroid, just substitute strength for it, because that's exactly what's being referred to. And muscle gain, of course. Muscle mass, strength. That's all it's about. But to say that testosterone does not contribute to muscle mass and strength is the same exact thing as saying that the sun this morning, just this morning, came up in the West. It did. I saw it. Because I I say it did. (laughs) And I've seen this in print. I've actually seen this in print. It's so distressing that people are willing to be so silly in order to jump on this man wagon. It's just very weird. I wish they weren't that way, but they are. And and people are getting tired of it. The parents of female athletes are getting tired of it. The husbands and wives and boyfriends. Imagine it's your daughter and she's devastated. And she placed third in the the state track meet and doesn't get her scholarship now. And she never will do better because... No, because now she's going to be older and she's peaked out. And this was her opportunity to go to college free. So what do you think about the equal pay scandal, the oh, soccer God. scandal? This is so stupid. It's just, why do you think, well, to begin with, men's and women's soccer are compensated. We go back and forth. I'll be the SJW. Well, I, I, one thing I saw a little meme yesterday, all soccer really is women's soccer. <laughs> I, saw, I, saw, I, saw, I saw a meme. <laughs> they're compensated. Your compensation structures are, are set up completely differently. As a percentage of revenue, women are already making what is it? Twice yep. as much yeah, as men like 4% are percent in terms two. of. But but no, these people want to pretend like there are as many people interested in watching women's soccer as there are men's soccer. Yep, and that's not. True. And That's it's not true. That's a lie. It's reflected in revenue. It's so, reflected in revenue. So, so when the men's World Cup generates four billion in revenue, and the women's over a four-year cycle does what was one hundred and seventy million, give or take. Yes, something to That's, that effect. It's what else not, is there to say? I don't know. What else there is to say? And I don't know how you what does people it mean if someone can can't understand dense. that though. I I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. You just don't understand arithmetic. We're, we're just, yeah, hey, this is, yeah, this is like a balance sheet. You know what I mean? You yeah, have some I, money that comes in, you and, know? and then you got to pay your, your bills, and then you have some money left over. Right. The men make 9% of revenue. The women make 13 Okay. So they do get paid more. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. They, they get paid more. The they just don't yeah. draw enough attention because yeah. nobody wants to watch them play soccer. Now, why is that? Is that because, because it's because of the patriarchy? That's why. That's why. Yeah, yes. it's the patriarchy. <laughs> you know, you know. It, I was at the, it, I was it, at the uh, speaking of the patriarchy, I was at the country club golfing the other weekend. Well, isn't that, uh, isn't that <laughs> <fantastic>. luxurious? <laughs> with Jeeves there to, Jeeves, to assist me. With your clubs. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so the dudes next to me were talking about this, right? So older guys just don't give a shit. And they're talking about this. They're like, oh, no, I'll never fucking. And they're like, I'll watch that shit if they're naked. <laughs> so, so that's part of the problem yeah. is, is people. Yeah. This is an issue to about 80 people. You know, the girls on the team and their girlfriends is... <laughs> That's who this is an issue to. <laughs> Nobody else is puzzled by this. Yeah. All right. What do the girls in the WNBA get paid relative to the NBA? And why? Do you really need us to explain this to you? Right. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by doing so. 
you ought to be smart enough to know what the deal is. And I, you know, is this look? If you really want to pursue this line of questioning, then we got to stop playing sports. Hmm. Now, don't well, that would be the fairest. Now, don't thing. we? That, that would be fair. Yes. Nobody can win. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because when somebody wins, somebody has to somebody lose. Somebody has to lose. And, that's and in any sport, that's not fair. Yes. It's just not fair that somebody loses. Yes. So you people, enlightenment. You know, your analysis doesn't go anywhere that you want it to be. You know, you've got to back this off and grow the fuck up. And and you got to look at it. Okay, you want female soccer players to get paid more, then you got to make it a better business. So how are you going to make it a better business? That's the real. It's not just trying yeah. to. In, you, in a you're se- going to have demand to more out money out from the, from what can't be paid. Yes, there isn't any more money because nobody watches your sport. Now, how do you make them want to watch your sport? I don't think you're going to like the answer to that. I really don't think you'll like the answer to that. Women beach volleyball figured it out, but you guys don't want to do that, do you? You're not going to be able to force people to spend money to watch you do something that they don't want to watch you do. I'm sorry, w- you don't get to why? tell it's what to watch. It's not misogyny. That's not why. It's not misogyny. It's the nature of sports competition. Exactly. It's you want to see super freaks doing super you, things. You want and to see athleticism It's not that the women aren't skilled, not at all, but Has take the women's soccer it. team. They got beat by a bunch of 15-year-old boys. So yeah, that tells and you the, you know, the and that We talked about that in an earlier podcast. There are several instances of that all over yeah. the world. And what's, it's not a knock what's, against what's, women. It just is what it is. What's interesting is their, their coaches knew that it would be good for them to play the boys. Mm. Like, because they knew they'd get beat yeah, yeah, yeah. and learn something yeah, give them from some, it. Some perspective. So, in other words, you already know this, but it's 2019, and it's so fucking satisfying <laughs> to be I mad. Think, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so goddamn satisfying to be offended by other people. Maybe it's just satisfying just to feel something, maybe, in today's... Just, a, just any kind of emotion is yeah, good. And, something and other anger than just, will do fine, yeah, right? Yeah. Anything other than to just get, like a... To get you a, off a of your telephone, vegetable, right? Oh, yeah. And then our, uh, get you away from Netflix or right. social media or porn right. for... Well, I guess you go for, to social media to do this. So it's to get you off Netflix and off the porn for long enough to get mad about to something. To get mad about something. And to this feel is, relevant. This is good enough and it makes you feel better. And to signal to everyone right. in your immediate vicinity that you too are virtuous and jesus so that's a little insight into mike and rip's politics was that, here, so. <laughs> was that enough to get death threats though well we'll, we'll maybe. see maybe we'll see maybe death threats are cool they're all gonna be yeah, i'm gonna yeah, kill yeah. you yeah. i'm gonna kill you and I mean, then Google, i'm gonna beat off youtube doesn't care to the video i'm gonna kill you first and then beat off to the video that's the youtube comments <laughs> on it. or some comment well <laughs> we'll see what they say that ought to you guys that, what's the name let's see the comments what's that wouldn't be necrophilia right because yeah. is it necro if it's just if, if they're jerking if, off if to... the cum lands on me when i'm dead <laughs> but is yeah, that I think if it's no if there's no penetration I think is that's it necrophilia the, i'm real I'm sure up, it is i'm, I'm real sure it is it probably is sexual if, satisfaction look, if necrophilia requires penetration we need, I we need don't know. Word. That's that's a pretty weak. Then you're not a <laughs> sexual. No, 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 no. Sexual intercourse. Oh, it, it stipulates uh, penetra- or attraction toward oh, or attraction oh, toward. Okay. See, I knew it was broader right, than that. Fine. Dictionaries broader than that. are racist anyway. I don't care. <laughs> so, boys, I don't believe in dictionaries. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> you got to kill me first, though, or you don't get to be a necrophiliac. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck we're gonna get in trouble mike we better How wrap this views? up man thanks for visiting yeah, thanks what's, for what's your me. website post this on the legion so. legion athletics is the hub so right L-E-G-I everything goes through there yeah i had another website muscle for life that was a glorified blog it was popular right. but it didn't serve much of a strategic purpose so i merged it into legion basically. legionathletics.com is where you'll find mike get his books and buy supplements You will be better for it. I promise you. Mike's a good guy, and he knows what he's talking about. If that's the end of this deal you're attracted to, then go there and patronize him. When we get into the supplement business, we'll murder him. (laughs) We'll gut him. We'll gut him. Just be prepared to be gutted, Mike. Come at me, bro, Uh, as the kids say. (laughs) Come at me, bro. That's a death threat. (laughs) 
That's a microaggression, <laughs> actually. Micro- yeah. Okay, thank you, people, for joining us on the podcast this time. We'll see you next time. Thanks to Mike. You guys be good. Hey, Mike here. And if you like what I'm doing on the podcast and elsewhere, and if you want to help me help more people get into the best shape of their lives, please consider checking out my VIP one-on-one coaching service where we can help you get in the best shape of your life. My team and I have helped people of all ages, circumstances, and needs. So no matter how complicated or maybe even hopeless you might think your situation is, we will figure it out and we will get you results. Every diet and every training program is 100% custom. We provide daily workout logs and do weekly accountability calls. Our clients get priority email service and discounts on supplements and other products and the list of benefits goes on and on. So to learn more, head over to www.legionathletics.com slash coaching. That's L-E-G-I-O-N athletics.com slash coaching and schedule your free consultation call. I should also mention that there is usually a wait list and new slots do fill up very quickly. So do not wait if this sounds even remotely interesting to you. Go ahead and schedule your call now. Again, that URL is legionathletics.com slash coaching.